Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey takes us to a very special enchanted place. And so to guide us through this journey, we are going to meet with Representative Dee Morikawa. And she represents the beautiful, beautiful island of Kauai and some other islands like Nihihau. So today, aloha, Dee. Welcome to Navigating the Journey. Aloha, Marsha. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you just won re-election yesterday. How many times, how long have you been on in the legislature? 10 years now. So I'll be doing another two years and I'm just so honored to be given that um, privilege to serve the people again. Wow, that's quite a job that we're running every two years. It is, but that's what keeps you on your toes, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, so you had a, or had a position in the leadership in the house. So what was that? The majority what? floor, it's, it's the majority floor leader. So the speaker has a vice speaker and the majority leader and myself, the majority floor leader. So four of us are in leadership. And my um, role is to just run the, everything that happens on the floor every day, doing Ooh. session, motion. Wow. Yeah. And just to make sure that the votes are counted properly, that that's my task. And I, you know, that's where I really um, feel comfortable with. And, you know, as we get older, it's scary to take on new responsibilities. So I'm glad that the speaker has let me do this for a while now. So um, how many people, how many legislators in the House? 51. 51. Mm -hmm. Are there any Republicans? Oh, gosh, we we should. you Yes, there are at least six. I think I'm not sure after this election. Um, I haven't really looked at it, but I think we, we have a handful, pretty much the same. We lost uh, Cynthia. Yes. And we gained, yeah, that one we gained uh, a Democrat. So there's one less. Well, I know Cynthia. I've known her for I don't know how long. And I know she was a Republican. However, working with her, you never, ever thought that she was a Republican. Never. And she, yes. it was so nice to have a Republican that you could call and she would return the call. And it, it was nice all of those years with her. Right, right. Really comfortable, yeah. And I knew several people that lived over there, Democrats, of course, and they made it clear they were voting for her. Yep. You know, they made it real clear up front. There's no, no funny kind. We're voting for her. Yeah. So because yeah. he just supported a lot of our women issues too, which is really nice. Yeah. So now, mm -hmm. tell us about Kauai, Nihihau, Lanai, and where else? Koa. Oh, no. Um, Lehua. Lehua. Lehua is, yeah, another island that's um, just a mile outside of Niihau. Niihau is about 17 miles away from Kauai, and uh, where I live in Waimea, we can see Niihau. Um, it's the population, although it may say it's 170, I think some of us um, think that it's around 50 or so, but it's a very, it's a forbidden island, um, and people are just not you have to be invited to visit that island. You you cannot just go. What is why is it forbidden? Well, that's what it's called, but it's it's privately owned island, right? It was oh. bought by the Robinson Sinclair family and then passed down to the Robinsons uh, way back in the eighteen hundreds. So it's just always been private, mm. and the only thing that's government there is maybe um, PMRF, our military. Uh, base out here they may have some uh, radars there and they have a school so that is publicly funded now do they have tourists because i saw a picture of a store that looked like it was for tourists 
Well, they do have tours. They do special hunting um, tours and they, they do on invitation some of the tours. And but I, yeah. I've never been there. So, you know, you've seen more than I've seen. Well, this is, you go, when you Google this, oh, you show, okay. these, yeah, right, right, right. show these pickles, pictures. Now your former mayor, mm -hmm. the big teddy bear, Bernard Cavallo. Bernard, mm -hmm. Bernard, he was saying how he was trying to get the local people on Kauai to speak the Hawaiian, the, the Niihau. The the, Niihau that language. That, yeah. It's very different. Yeah, it's nothing like the Hawaiian that I remember on the Big Island. It's definitely different. But yeah, he did try that. And he brought um, some of those the those the residents over to Kauai to perform. And it was such a treat to hear that dialect. So, and so that's where Prince Kuhio was born. No, I'm not sure about that. Hmm. Well, it's when I Googled it, that's what it says. I don't know. But it says he was, but it doesn't say anything about his brother. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just telling you what, when you Google it, that's all it says. I don't know uh, that's, anymore. that's pretty much what I do. I have to Google and get my information about the, that island. I did have a controversy one time when, um, Lehua had a really bad mouse a rat problem. And I was pretty upset that they would just dump a whole lot of poison on the island because we know it's a habitat for the birds. But they, feel, they felt like this is the way we can get rid of them, even if uh, some other species might not prevail through that major poisoning. And today it, it is. What they did plan did turn out to the outcome is good. The rats and mice are gone. The birds are thriving. Oh, what kind of birds are there? Is oh, it just this one island or, or that several island? Other? No, well, that island because there is no nobody there. Oh, and Nihau. Nihau. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So it's Nihau and Lehua are critical habitats for the monk seal and every bird you can imagine that's in the state because they're just free to roam and it's, it's beautiful. I've seen videos of the birds. There are thousands and more thousands of birds flying around the island. And so tell us about Kauai, because it's worldwide the most beautiful place on the planet. So tell us about Kauai. Exactly, because Kauai is considered the Garden Island. We have a lot of rain, Waialeale, it's supposedly the west wettest spot in the world, I believe, maybe not so much now, but it is. It, we have constant waterfalls um rain it's always green it's just the most beautiful island you can imagine when you come to my backyard which is the Waimea Canyon mm -hmm. it's like a beautiful thing if you haven't seen the Grand Canyon or well, Waimea is is similar to that just in a smaller form but it that's that's the beauty of Kauai rainbows waterfalls streams I, we have a question Mm. from a viewer. Uh, is your district worried about the election? What advice would you give to people who are worried? We were all worried about the election. If you're talking about the presidential election, as far as local elections, though, I think we pretty much um, have the incumbents back and some very good uh, new freshmen in the legislature. Um, the mayor's race was a big thing on Oahu, but on Kauai, our elections are pretty much well. We have a new face in our council, and that's uh, Billy DeCosta. That should be, and, and Bernard is back in. Our ex-mayor is back in. Is so he in the city council and the county council? He, yes, he ran for the Kauai County Council, and he's back in there. So it's going to be interesting. This, uh, You know, Billy DeCosta is a west side person, too. He helps a lot of children in the the school settings and he takes them out on adventures up to the mountain. So he, he's going to add a very good uh, perspective to the council. So, so all of your, well, did you see the pictures of last night of all the people on Oahu in line to vote? Yes. In fact, we were, we had so many angry people like, what are you doing, Oahu, right? Because <laughs> we're but waiting. they mailed the ballots out a month ahead of time. Why were people no, waiting? I, I think that just happened because we have the right to vote and register on that day. 
And so these people were probably people that weren't registered to vote. So they had to go through that motion in order to get a ballot. Oh. And I, that's the only time they could have done it. So if they missed the deadline to register, I think yeah. that's what. I couldn't believe that crowd. It's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen anything like that in all the years that we've been voting. I've oh, never ne seen it. Even when President Obama went through this first election, that was a major popular race. It was, it was. Something like this. But you know, Hawaii, because we have um, mail-in um, voting now, we were ahead of the game. Kauai was supposed to have been the pilot this election, just Kauai. And then the legislature, de legislature decided to put the whole state in. Why don't we do it for the whole state and try it out? So we had the plans in place, we had the funding in place and we did it, then COVID hit. So we were in a good place to deal with the pandemic and have this kind of election with all, everything ironed out with supposedly no problems. But of course this problem is something that um, is an eye opener. It, it was because the primary, you know, we voted. Right. Um, and it uh -huh. went smoothly. It went very right. smooth. Right. And so when I looked at the pictures last night, I thought, wow. Yeah. But I, yeah. It was, I mixed emotions. I was glad to see that many people wanted to vote. And that's number one. But then why did they wait so long? <laughs> so that yeah. was I'm sure dark, late last yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. But yours went smooth. Yes. Kauai was smooth. Yeah. Kauai. All three of us, um, uh, Rep Nakamura and Rep Tokioka, we all had similar numbers, and which is really great because we are a really good team. We work together very well with Senate President Kochi. Now, I suggested to Kochi, of course, because I think he, I love him dearly. I suggested that all of the neighbor islands and some parts of Oahu the rural parts of Oahu should form a neighbor island clique or group or caucus or whatever, since you have so many things in common, you know, as opposed to the rest of the legislature, which is so Oahu centric. Right. So the neighbor islands form uh, caucuses, but we never think about certain areas of Oahu, which you are right are similar to neighbor islands and rural areas. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's why instead of calling each other the outer islands, we always have to say the neighbor islands. But yes, yeah, so we still do have caucuses that involve, you know, Hawaiian issues will involve anyone mm -hmm. um, Oahu neighbor islands that just have that interest. Yeah, because why and I used to be oh, yeah. the new district for Kauai. We, yeah. yeah. Yes, we have similar problems. <laughs> and yes, and every every storm, you both get the same thing, yeah. Yes. And so, but now he said that was a good idea, but it didn't happen. Oh, that was exactly. last, last yeah. session. Yeah. That's hard to do, but you have to believe that we as legislators talk to each other, um, try to help advise each other, especially the ones with similar um, districts, like, you know, me for the West side. And I, I talk very closely with the West side representatives on the other islands because we have similar climates, similar issues. I, I still don't understand the canoe districts, but that's okay. Uh, that's a redistricting thing. If they populate- well, We do get to redistrict this year, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna have to address it. it depends on your population, right? Because if Kauai doesn't, we're by right supposed to have only two representatives and possibly two senators, but to compromise, it, they did three representatives and just one senator. So it depends on the population count next go round. We never know if we're gonna canoe, but canoe just doesn't work. No. You can have a representative from say even Lanai, which we used to be a canoe with Lanai, trying to represent my district, right? It, it's just two different things. It's very hard to do. Well, that's the way I was thinking about Molokai mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and Hana. You know, it's like, right. really? Right. Yeah, how, mm -hmm. what, how do you communicate with 
it's those... really tough for uh, Representative Dikoi. She has Lanai, Molokai, and um, Hana, but she does a very good job. I, you know, I give her credit. But that's what Maui is like, right? Because they're so they're the same islands in that um, area that they do get along very well. And they had they had a very good ferry system, which is just like getting in a car and going to another place, right? For them, it's jump on the ferry and go to the next island. Didn't they get away? Get rid of the ferry? They they did they did. But they I'm sure there's boat systems that still work for them. I'm not completely sure. I did ride the ferry um, to from Maui to Molokai. Um, it was fun. <laughs> but it was, yeah, I, I rode once, yes. You, get very, <laughs> you can get very sick. <laughs> yeah. But that was, it seems strange that because there are people that live on one island that work on another, and right. you would think the ferry would, would be the best way to do this. Yeah. But it's tough. You never know what the ocean conditions are like. So they depend a lot on their, their planes. Yeah. So so tell us what's on the agenda for this coming session or have, do you know yet? It's got to be economy. It's economy balancing the state budget because we are going to be in a huge hole. Um, it's a good thing that we had put money aside uh, for savings, hurricane um, relief so we can you know, we have to just bring all the funds together and see what um, what we need to do to just maintain the basic services. But it, we still want to focus on early learning. I think that's the priority. Housing is picking up um, statewide. We have, mm. have, especially here on Kauai, we have a lot of developments that have um, affordable developments that have come up. So well, we're just going to doing that with whatever little money we have. Well, what about the tax since the hotels are shut down? Yeah. Uh, that, that income. Uh, there, there's yeah. not going to be that to depend on anymore. Um, it's hard. What do you do? We'll slowly open, yes, but that still doesn't fill the inventory that we have in Hawaii, yeah? So that's the discussions we have to have. Yeah. I just wonder how you get you know, where do you go from here with this, uh, this hole? Like, I don't know what else to call it, you know. This you, we we, just, we yeah. just pray that first of all, the vaccine comes through. And then that way we can move around more safely. And when that happens, things will start coming back because, you know, ultimately Hawaii is a great destination. People want to come here to get away from some of that nonsense that's happening but now that we have a new president i hope um you know th there's not so much of that to deal with but still hawaii is a great destination it is it's it's absolutely gorgeous i had a friend ask me on the mainland how are you doing with this lockdown i said i live in hawaii what else what is there to say <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> i'm loving it <laughs> yeah so, yeah, what else is there to say? What, how can you complain? Nope, you just nope. grab your things, your beach towel, and head off to the beach. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, why are we going to complain? Especially, so, is there anything other than your new legislators begin today? Is that correct? Well, not quite today. I would say more tomorrow because we're still getting a few more votes um, uh, counted. Uh, but tomorrow we can start going full swing. Yeah. With the new people. Yes, organize the committees. I think we're gonna have we're gonna look at some different committees because of the things that we got to deal with now with the pandemic. So that should be very very interesting. Um, we're a hardworking group. The House has always been a hard working group of legislators. So we're all up for the challenge. I, I just see really good things um, happening. A bright minds come together to find solutions. That's something that um, I can vouch for for the state. It's gonna happen on our side. Yeah, what about Kai since he just got elected? Oh my, we're lucky to have such a young Hawaiian boy going out there. I think that's, that's really nice. Um, you know, Akaka 
his father, of course. Th those are the images that really represent Hawaii very well. And more so now with the new administration, I think um, he will make us proud. I watched him every night because he was flying the helicopter. I watched him every night during the volcano because I was one of those addicted to watching it as it was moving. And every evening, watch it move. And um, he was in the helicopter telling us what was going on. So I think everybody in the world got to know him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, now, um, who is your senator? You said you Ron have one senator, huh? Senate President Ron Kochi is our oh, senator. Yeah, he's, he's your one senator, okay. Yeah. So yeah. English, Senator English is? Maui. Maui, okay. Yeah. That's a lot of area to cover for one <laughs> senator. It is, it is. But we're, we're lucky because um, on Kauai, we know each other, right? We're one big happy ohana. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's the way it is on most islands, though. Most yeah, of us get to know a lot of people. But you know, like it's uh, we laugh sometimes because we say that the Kauai, the all of Kauai population can fit into Aloha Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. Speaking of Kauai, all of Kauai, what about your small businesses that used to depend on tourism? Yeah, they're struggling, um, especially if it's only on tourism, but I, I'm happy to see that the local residents are starting to do some of the experiences that the tourists um, enjoyed, but still you can't fill the hotel with just locals, yeah, but they have been staying, you know, and they need to get a break, they'll go and do a staycation, and but it's just not enough yet. Oh, no, of course not. But other small businesses other than the hotels, you know, uh, restaurants and shopping and things like that, how are they doing? I think they're doing fine. It's just the ones that are really dependent on tourism that are not going, not surviving, not doing very well. But you know, when you go out shopping, you you see the stores still, still opening up because, like I said, residents still go there and 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 shop. As long as um, you know they have their unemployment coming in and they still have their jobs, you know, we'll be fine. Um, there's still jobs opening because we have a lot of ag land. So there's still potential there. Now, I have another question. Oh, I see. Has, Has things gotten better on Kauai? And when Kauai will open to tourists in October? You know, ever since um, the, the opening of tourism, I will admit um, that there are tourists around. Uh, I, I'm just hoping that I, when I see any interaction, I haven't seen any interaction, but I would assume that whenever someone sees a tourist, they kind of back paddle and move the other way, right? But they are coming. Um, mm -hmm. Koke is right in my backyard. I see the traffic going up and it's definitely happening. It, it really is. So it's a slow process. It's dangerous. People are very afraid that the virus will come in and spread around and uh, you know, I really don't know what to say. Uh, it's Does gonna have to what, wearing a mask, the tourists protect, wearing. Yeah, well, protect yourself first. And yeah. um, if you see those tourists without the mask, I mean, everyone should be wearing a mask. Um, on Kauai, I'm not sure. I have, I don't think anyone would go up to them and tell them put their mask on, although the businesses do. But most people just avoid them. Mm -hmm. They'll just turn the other way and walk away. So now, do you stay here on Oahu during the session? Or do you go back yeah. and forth? I, I go back and forth. Um, I usually find, uh, I'll stay at the hotel or find a place in January during all of session, but I'll come home on the weekends. But in this new COVID, um, I, I'm not sure of how I'm going to do it because I there's quarantine, right? People fear that if I travel to Oahu, I might bring it home to Kauai. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that. So no, we they won't let you come home if you're staying over here. No, I'm no, and your mayor especially. Yeah, 
know, so he's I, not going to have it. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Yeah, he is a darling. He is really your mayor. Yeah. yeah. He wants to keep us all safe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so during this session, you rent a place or, you know, just yeah, the I'll, either, I'll either, but, you know, the hotels right now are crying for people to come so I would probably want to help them out first and then you get to go home on the weekends and come back yeah. right mm -hmm. now do you have a calendar for this next session yet not yet we won't we're just going to start organizing committees first and then um, in January when we get all our staff in the plans will be more um, solid and we'll know what our agenda is, our priorities will be. So we we'll, we only have a minute or so left. If anybody that's watching and has a bill in mind, contact is it my too early. Is it too early to no, contact? Never too early. Just reach out, contact any of your legislators through the legislative website, leave an email, uh, comments, whatever. We always get back to our constituents. And then you can show them how to get a bill through the legislature. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Well, it's always a pleasure visiting with you. And you just to let you know that your speaker has agreed to um, allow me one legislator a month to talk about what is going on at the legislature. So thank you. And Scott, thank you for, for doing this. So we have scheduled the first Wednesday of every month until May to visit with the legislature so we can watch bills go through and whatever. So thank you again for visiting with us and we'll see you next time.